Foundation. What what does foundation look like for you in a practical sense? Uh, in a practical sense, I feel, I feel it's a couple things. It's 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 a home front, it's family, and it's faith. Really, like those two things. Yeah. Um. My aunt used to when she was here. She's passed. Uh, it's been a while, but sorry. When I was when I was younger, she used to take me to church like every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, up until maybe like I was, I want to say uh, 12, like I was in church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. My parents worked a lot, so I would go with her. And I feel like, and I've been in private school, I was in private schools up until high school. So I've always had like faith and prayer mm -hmm. and that to lean back on. Mm -hmm. um, but as I've gotten older and I haven't been as uh, strong in my faith, it's my family mm. and the home front and it's like, you know, when I have a bad day at work and I come home, it's like my, my son, my five-year-old doesn't know what's really going on in my life. Mm -hmm. So it's like he shifts my perspective to understand, like, it's not whatever you're dealing with, like, it doesn't matter here. Right. 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 Um, and I think that for me, those two things, just like, re like remembering where I came from and, and, and the faith and then also just making sure my family, like, you know, my wife, my kids are like, happy and then they see me happy because mm -hmm. they can immediately tell when I'm not yeah. and I don't like that feeling that they feel when they see I'm not in a good place and my parents too like my mom and my dad will quickly call me out when they see that I'm not in a good space mm -hmm. or I'm thinking about something in a in a in a way that I shouldn't be thinking about it on or ruminating on something for a long period of time yeah they know how to get me out of that funk and like address situations head on and I think those things like become now like the like the like that's where I need to be at to stay grounded in like wherever I'm gonna go or whatever I'm going through. As I've as I've grown, self accountability becomes just so important to make sure I you know whatever it is, mm. how am I responding? How am I, you know, how am I dealing with it? Everything from a thought life to mm. something happening to me. How, where are you on the scale of self accountability and that being a daily thought? <laughs> Where am I at? Uh, that's a, let me see if I can answer that question. Though. Um, let me just talk about my career. Like in my career, mm -hmm. I always say like, oh, yo, I'm not carrying cancer. And I really believe like there's things that happen at your work and people will hide behind trying to point the finger at someone else to not take accountability. And I'll even, I'll be the first person to say, yo, it was my fault. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that sometimes just to see how the room changes. Mm -hmm. Because once you get to the bottom of like, all right, we figured out what the problem is, like let's figure out the solution. Mm -hmm. So I'm like one that's like, I just don't, anything I'm doing is not as serious as like what a doctor is doing mm -hmm. or you know, what you know, a teacher is even doing. Like mm -hmm. that's even more important than what I'm doing in marketing and advertising. So I t like everything that I've done that somebody feels uncomfortable about, or I feel like it's not as successful as I thought it should have been, I'll be the first person to be like, yo, it's like, man, I, mean, I could have done better at that, or yeah. it's my fault, yeah. or, you know, and even on the home front, right? Like I'm getting better at like, all right, you know what? Maybe I could have done that better, yeah. or I'll be, I'm, I'm a type of person, I'm extremely vulnerable, mm -hmm. and no matter what I do, and so part of that vulnerability is like the self-accountability. I think those two things go hand in hand. Because uh, most people, people don't take accountability because they don't want to be vulnerable enough to, yeah. you know, call it's, things out. It's interesting because I think we're both transparent and we love to be transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, as you, especially in this city, depending on where you go, are there any social masks? Because I think we all mm -hmm. at some point put on a mask. What's your social mask that you put on? I can put on one that says, oh, I'm deep, let me, uh, yeah. and to some degree, but like, what's the, what's the mask you may put on if you need, if you want to protect that vulnerability, depending on the space? I, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Okay. To be, 
Because I feel like I, when I come in spaces, I feel like, man, I could talk to anybody about anything. Yes. But most people don't, aren't comfortable in that place. So I find, I find myself putting on the mask of like, let me play it cool and act like I don't care about this oh. person. Oh. So, that, so I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because I feel so uncomfortable when I'm trying to act like I don't have anything to say to this person or I'm, you know, yeah. like. Yeah. Well, it so takes I'm, energy to yeah, kind of just, figure out. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what my, I don't know. It's just weird when you leave an environment and I have this feeling that I feel when I leave an environment of like, man, I wasn't being my truest self in there. And it's because I'm trying to play it cool and act like. Yeah. You know, I'm not living to the person that I am, like yeah. being talkative, talking about deep things, like yeah. and asking people questions. It does take work to like, no matter what somebody else is presenting, mm -hmm. in that moment, I'm not going to take it personal. I'm going to continue to be me, mm -hmm. you know, with that being like nothing negative, like mm -hmm. my best self. Mm -hmm. Brother to brother, you are a, you are a tone setter. Every meeting we met, we went into back then, the entire room said, the temperature is gonna lie within him. Uh, that's what I saw. I think there are gonna be a lot of people that connect to your passion for being a father. Could you explain from a father's perspective the love that goes in that you have for your boys? <laughs> that's a tough one. I because mean, I, I don't think men express, you know, we're, yeah. we're providers and we're this. Yeah. I just had a kid mm -hmm. and I, we were talking earlier mm -hmm. I saw a, a father have to kiss his children goodbye and go fight in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I don't think before I had my daughter, mm -hmm. I think it would have moved me, but not. But now I'm putting myself in that position. Mm -hmm. There's just something about a male's love also mm -hmm. uh, with a mother's love that I think is important. What, what is that like for you and the love you have for your boys? That, I, mean, I, t I mean, I try to articulate. It's, it's a tough thing. My dad used to always tell me like I was, or he was, he was my number one fan. Like that's the one, there's a lot of mm. things my dad taught me, but him used to like always telling me that. When I was younger, I didn't, I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever dad. But now that I've gotten older, I'm like, man, my dad being able to say that to me and not holding me to these standards, is like, I get that. And that friendship has, you know, he's been my dad and I respect him, but the friendship that I have with him is because, you know, because he looks at me like he is my fan, you know? I didn't realize, I, I yeah. do know, my dad is the same thing. Yeah. My dad, if I, if I scored 15, mm -hmm. he was like, you did great. You could <laughs> hit them two free throws, but you did, you know, yeah. your dad being your best friend. And to end it, when your son calls you, mm -hmm. that's because he's looking at it. That's that same thing. 100%. Since I've known you, you don't meet many people who keep telling you keep affirming you and not that you always want to lead on people affirming you but you you damn sure need people to affirm you in a vision for your life you have done that since I met you so I know you're doing that for people around you so for, for let me say take this I 100% know that you do that for others so I'll take this moment to say thank you because you know you walked in here and said you're proud of me I'm not here without your encouragement. I'm not here without me calling your phone two and a half hours and then apologizing at the end. <laughs> so thank you because I, I'm not the man I am without a brotherly encouragement, a brotherly, maybe you should look at it like this. And I don't really want to, but since I'm talking to you, I probably should. I know that your son feels that. I know that both your sons feel that. I know that everybody you've interacted with feels that, but I just wanted to say thank you for being a blessing to my life because this does not happen. I don't get the confidence on my own. So I think this is definitely full circle. It's only up, but, but you, are a part, you are a part of this. I'm not here without that. Man, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> yes, bro. <laughs> yeah.